Hi everyone, there's a quick intro to FM8 um, just to get you started. So I've opened up FM8 and chosen a new sound by clicking on the file menu here and going new sound. I've selected expert mode, which in this particular case displays in this essential area all of the properties of the FM operators which are listed here in the matrix panel. A, B, C, D, E and F are all FM operators. X is a noise generator and Z is a filter. Uh, now the way the matrix works, which is a little confusing at first, is like this. First of all, I'm going to double click on this value to remove the connection. If I select operator F, first thing that happens is that all of F's properties are displayed here. This is the envelope for F, right? You can change the envelope and do whatever you want with it. This is the frequency ratio for F here. So I click, you can see it going up and coming down, okay? And if I click in the middle, we get the in-between values. But at the moment, this operator isn't connected anywhere. So if I click on it, it is selected. If I right click on it and it goes dark, it is turned off. When I right click again, it goes white, it is turned on. But as you can see, even though it's turned on, it's not connected to anything. This row, this light gray row here is the output. If I click on the output directly below F, click and push up, it makes a connection and I can start entering a value from zero to 100. So now operator F is connected to the output. The row below, by the way, this row simply pans the output uh, right or left. So let's leave that for the time being. So here we have one operator collected here. Now, when it's connected like that, you can play with the envelope make a sort of plucked like plucked envelope there's a square envelope all the usual stuff so this is the envelope here okay it's just a graphic envelope but what about the FM how do we connect it well let's turn on operator E so I'm going to click on it that selected it we are now displaying here operator E's properties Okay, don't get confused with that. We click on it, it goes orange. That means that these values in here all pertain to operator, operator E. It's not turned on though. I need to right click on it to turn it on and it goes white. It's now turned on, but as you can see, it's not connected to anything. If I, cl if I click down here on the output row and push up, then just like F, E is connected directly to the output. We can't hear much, but if I uh, tune it, I think you can hear it fine there. No FM, they're just connected directly to the output. I'm gonna double click here again to remove the connection. This time, instead of connecting it directly to the output, let's get some FM going and I'm gonna connect E to F. So I'm gonna click on F's line here directly below E and push up. Now, operator E is modulating operator F in an FM pair with E on top, F is the carrier, E is the modulator. And this is the amount by which E is modulating operator F. This is the, it's like the modulation index here. Now we've got this little feature in um, FM8 at the top here, it actually shows the spectrum. Let's play a note. It's going to sound weird because I've got a strange frequency ratio going here. That sounds like it might be good for tubular bells if it had an appropriate envelope. So let's let's do that. Let's just play with it. Here's F. Now, if you can't see enough of the envelope here in this little pane, um, what you need to do is click anywhere in the background and push up or down and that zooms in and out. So I'm gonna zoom out on this envelope so I can get a good long release going. That's F, That's, here's E.
Okay, and there's our little tubular bell already. Let's try a slightly different harmonic ratio, well, inharmonic ratio here. So this is the ratio 1.42, click on that, to one. Of course, if I go back to operator E and I make this, now we've got a fully harmonic sound. Okay, this is basically how FM8 works. You construct an operator matrix here by uh, clicking on the lines of different operators and hold, click hold and push up and down and that makes a connection and puts a value in. So for example, if you want to use operator D here as well, we click on it, we've turned it on, uh, sorry, turn it on by right clicking on it and I'm going to uh, modulate E with D. Click there. If we wanted for any reason to connect the output of operator F back into D as well and modulate D with F, we can do that just by clicking above F like this. So things are going to get rather complicated if we start having all sorts of connections going everywhere. But this is just to show the versatility of this little matrix here. You can literally set up the operators in any fashion that you want. If you want to imitate say for example the dx7 one one of the dx7 algorithms it was done like this we have a pair f and e going to the output with e modulating f then we have another pair in parallel d connected to the output and c modulating d and so on and then another pair like this so you can make any algorithm that you want with this matrix in addition to the fm connections there is also a noise generator um, and if I just turn off I will take away these connections here turn on the noise generator and connect it directly to the output I need to set its properties but we can hear it there okay so here is a noise generator and then the final thing in the in the row here is um, the filter and if we want to put a filter on the whole of the output and say everything is coming down through operator F instead of taking F directly to the output we will take F to the input of the filter and then take the output of the filter to the main output okay so I don't want to get into too much detail here this is just to explain how this little matrix works and how you can start connecting operators together and remember this simple thing when the operator is orange its properties are displayed here when the operator is dark in other words black and it's not white it is muted it's turned off the, all the connections remain but the operator is no longer actually functioning so it's a quick way to hear uh, what different parts of a complex algorithm might be actually doing okay so there you go that's something to start exploring